Hello everyone once again. Today I'm going to show you some information, good information I think you should know, uh, just concerning some interesting things like air conditioners and heat pumps, dehumidifiers, anything with a refrigeration system. We're going to talk about some ways maybe to save a little money on that stuff and maybe increase the life a little bit. But first of all, I want to say that this video might be a little bit different than most of my other videos out there, so if you're a subscriber, just bear with me now. First of all, I want to talk about, just in case anybody out there doesn't know, variable frequency drives, great things. They, um, what they do is they control the speed of an induction motor, and they do that by very simple means. I'll show you that right now. Okay, so... Like I was explaining, variable frequency drives, great little things. They are pretty simple and they offer great usefulness for controlling the speed of an induction motor. So what we have here is a very small variable frequency drive. On the input side we've got single phase 240 volts AC and on the output side we have three phase 240 volts AC. Now the input is 60 hertz alternating current and the output is whatever we want. So the input gets rectified into direct current and then it gets switched out as alternating current with a different frequency. So if we start them up, you can see what it does. Turn it higher. So very useful. It eliminates the startup surges in the motors in typical induction motors and it offers variable speed and is controllable by a number of different inputs. So variable frequency drive, what a great little tool. And they're industry standard. A lot of different manufacturers make them, a lot of different features, all kinds of things, great things. But what does that really have to do with refrigeration or heat pumps, air conditioners, things like that. How can we save money by using one of those? Well, you may have heard before that some manufacturers make air conditioners or heat pumps with variable frequency drive packages built in. And that saves money by matching the demand. If it needs high output, the compressor speeds up and maybe the condenser and evaporator fans do too. And vice versa, when the load is small then it slows down. But, what if you already have a refrigeration system that doesn't have a variable frequency drive with it? Can you use one with it and save money with it? And, can you use it with a single phase compressor? Today, I'm going to answer some of those questions and I'm going to show you some great things that you can do with the variable frequency drive with all sorts of different refrigeration systems. Okay, so what we have here is a little example setup, just to prove the point. This is an old water fountain chiller, or a drinking fountain chiller. It cools the water, and the loop for the water was broken, but the evaporator still works. It's, that doesn't have any holes in it, no leaks in it, all the refrigerant is still in it, and there have been no ports on it, nothing modified with it. But, the thermostat was also broken on it, so I got this one pretty cheap. But, there are limitations with it, since it has a single phase compressor and a single phase fan. Normally, if you plug it in, it just runs at one speed, but it gets worse. So if we look at the sticker on the side of this compressor, it tells us a few things about it. It says it uses R134A, it's single phase, 115 volts, but then it says 15 LRA. What that means is 15 locked rotor amps. That means every time we plug this thing in, it's going to use 15 amps. When it's normally running, though, it only uses about 2. And this is a startup surge that I'm talking about with induction motors and this really affects compressors big time because they switch on and off a lot when the thermostat makes a call for cooling 
and when the thermostat is satisfied and that really does a number to the windings in that compressor motor. The reason it does that is really simple. It has an induction motor inside and like all inductors the way it limits current is by alternating magnetic fields built up within the stator core. But when we first plug it in there are no alternating magnetic fields. That means the current is only going to be limited by the start winding itself which is really bad for it because that means it's going to get very hot and eventually it's going to blow that stator winding out. Now I'm going to show you a little demonstration of that. I'm just going to hook this compressor directly online to single phase 120 volts AC and we'll see if the meter can register that surge current. As you can see it got part of it. It jumped up to 8 amps and now it's settling back at 2. But now that the compressor is running, it's only running though at one speed because the frequency of the incoming power is fixed even though we have a very heavy load. The water in the chiller is really hot but there's no mechanism to compensate for that within the system itself. It only runs on one speed and it only uses this thermostat. But we can fix all that with a variable frequency drive. Okay, so we saw the system running without a VFD and I said that it could run from a VFD but the compressor is a single phase compressor and the VFD is a three phase VFD and what's more the compressor is 115 volts and the VFD is 240 volts but will it work? well let's find out right now okay this is our VFD we have it hooked up through that circuit breaker there that you see on the right and the black cord coming in at the top 240 volts AC goes through that filter unit and a rectifier goes right into the DC bus that VFD and the output using just two of the phases goes to that outlet and that goes to the compressor will it start? well I'm gonna go and hit the start button and we'll see if it will start up now the VFD is running it's outputting 25 Hertz but does it make the compressor run? Alright, the compressor is running and the condenser fan is even running and everything's working. So we know that the VFD does run the compressor, it even runs a single phase compressor. But can we change the frequency? Can we go past 25 Hz? I'll turn it up now to its normal speed. So now it's running at its normal speed, 60 Hz. So we know it can start the compressor with a lower frequency to avoid the surge current and it will save the windings in the compressor. But how does it help us save money? Okay, here's how the VFD really saves money. Besides saving on the life of the compressor, it saves on the power usage when full output is not needed. Now this VFD has a built-in monitoring function, so we can monitor the power, and I'll show you that now. So right now, these units are in thousands of watts or kilowatts, and it says 0.27, so that means it's using about 270 watts of full output, and that's pretty normal. But what if we don't need full output? What if we could run it at half speed because the load is small? Let's turn it down to about half the frequency and then look at the power meter again. Now we're at 30 hertz, half speed. Now let's look at the power meter. It's 130 watts, so we've just about cut the power usage in half. 
that adds up to a lot, especially in bigger systems. But the next element goes beyond what the VFD can do alone because we need a device to control the output of the VFD according to the load on the system. So, now we know that the compressor can run from the VFD and we can save power with it by cutting the output when it's not needed, but we have to have a mechanism to control the VFD. Now you could use a regular thermostat and that would provide a soft start capability so it would slowly ramp up and ramp down the compressor, but what if we want the output to be proportional to what the load is? That's where we have another one of these great little tools. This is a temperature controller. It has a few settings on it. We can control the temperature demanded and it will output a proportional signal to the variable frequency drive to control the frequency. It has a little temperature sensor. We'll put that to whatever we want to control. And that way, the compressor is always running only where it needs to be. Okay, now we have a temperature controller hooked up to our variable frequency drive, which runs the chiller's compressor. And right now, it's currently satisfied, so it's not calling for any cooling. So the variable frequency drive is at its minimum output. The water temperature is 10 Celsius, about 50 Fahrenheit, and the commanded temperature is 11. So we're already below what we commanded. So if we want to increase the output, we need to decrease the temperature. So I'll turn it down. We should be able to hear it speed up. And now we've commanded the temperature to decrease down to 8 Celsius. So the variable frequency drive will respond. And as it gets down closer to 8 Celsius, the output will start falling off. And the variable frequency drive will slow down the compressor the closer it gets to 8 Celsius. So again, it saves money by matching the output power to the demand that we place on it. So here we are, we're at the chiller, and as you can see, the temperature is falling now that we're at full output. It says 47.5 right now, I'll flip it to Celsius, 8.8 .8 Celsius, and we commanded 8. And it falls pretty fast on full output, and here's our temperature sensor to the temperature controller. Just watch it for a minute. Fall down. That's reading a little different than the temperature controller is reading. Now at the VFD, we're running at 71 hertz, and that's the maximum frequency I've set it to. So with the VFD, not only can we use less power when we need it, but we can also get out more power. So normally, it runs at 240 watts, but now, it's running a little more and it's slowing down since it's reached its set point but it runs at about 320 at 70 Hertz so but now it's slowing down because it's reaching its set point and the temperature controller is taking care of that automatically okay and the temperature controller seems to be pretty satisfied now with where it's at so now it's running at its minimum frequency again but if we heat it up again, if we put a load on the chiller, it will speed up and slow down proportionally. Okay, I'll just try to show you where it's right in the middle. 
it's not a full output and it's not at minimum output it's working to maintain the temperature of 5 celsius now let's take a look at the drive now if we look at the drive again it's not at minimum output and it's not at maximum output it's just right where it needs to be to maintain the temperature for the load so the temperature controller is working and normally like I said it outputs about 240 watts at 60 Hertz but now that we're running less than that it's using about 150 watts so we are saving we're not using more than we need to and we're not using less either did you guys know drinking fountain chillers can make ice? <laughs> Now the chiller I was playing with is used to actually to cool my computer. Looks like it's doing a pretty good job of it. Yeah, pretty good. Okay, so in that demonstration we proved a point. You can run compressors, which are on air conditioners and heat pumps, dehumidifiers, chillers, whatever. You can run them from a variable frequency drive and you can change the speed of it. You can also use the temperature controller to make sure that the output is proportional to the load or the demand. But there are a few things that you should know before you just go and get a VFD and hook it right up. The first is mostly, mainly I should say, the speed at which you can run the compressor without damaging it. You can't run it too low and you can't run it too high. Now normally what I do is I set the minimum frequency to 25 Hertz. At low speeds the oil and the lubricant in the compressor doesn't lubricate the compressor as well because the flow is not as good. So there is a minimum speed. If we go below that the compressor won't be lubricated well enough and it could even jam up or seize up. So I try to keep it at 25 Hertz. And if you want to be safe, make it 30 or 40. And you can also check with the manufacturer of the compressor. Some manufacturers let their compressors run down to 15 hertz, no problem. And some say 40 hertz is as low as you want to go, so check with that. On the upper end, 60 hertz is the normal here in America, in the United States. But if you're in Europe or some other country which has 50 hertz power, sometimes then 50 hertz is normal and some compressors can go up to 60 or 70 hertz but normally like I say in the United States it's 60 hertz and I usually run my compressors up to 70 hertz you don't want to go too high then because when you go higher it does increase the pressure the high side pressure and it also decreases the low side pressure and you can't have it too low and you certainly don't want to have it running in a vacuum because then you will have more lubrication problems and you will have problems with the valves. Now, if you do want to see a compressor being destroyed on a VFD, there's a great YouTube channel, Aussie 50, and he absolutely destroys these compressors on variable frequency drives. So if you want to see what happens, check that out. And he cuts them apart and everything. Good stuff. Now, one of the biggest problems that people say that they have with variable frequency drives and compressors is not that it doesn't work, it's just that they're too expensive. This is where I can show you really how to save money. There are a lot of places out there that have these variable frequency drives on the internet and they're a lot of money. But there are a few places around the internet that have them for a lot less and some stores, some surplus stores that you can actually walk into and take a look at this stuff before you buy it and they're a lot cheaper. So I'm going to show you that right now. Okay, case in point, right here, we've got an inverter similar, very similar to the inverter that I'm running, about the same output power, and look at that. That's crazy how much that is. Unbelievable, but you do a little looking around the internet, we can get that for one heck of a lot less. Right here we go, on eBay. Now look at that price compared to this other one and that's the same drive and that's actually the same one that very similar to the one that I have and you can't beat that 
Now this temperature controller too. Look at that. Crazy, no way. You can do much better than that. Let's take a look. That's much better. Much better. Look at that. They've got tons of them. They can't sell them fast enough. You'd be crazy not to. Now those were some pretty good prices, but there is a place with even better ones. That's right, CTR Surplus. Now I tell you, the prices are unbelievable. And I'm telling you the truth. I got the chiller, and the drive, and the temperature controller all less than $50. Unbelievable. And they've got everything you'd ever want. All kind of electronics. Drives, temperature controllers, contactors, switches, circuit breakers, IGBTs, whatever. Look them up on Google. You'll find them. Tons of eBay stores, great deals. And they all ship in the United States. Okay, so just a few closing words. We saw it all work, and you saw how you can get your motor controllers, your temperature controllers cheap. But, that was in the United States. Now, if you're in Europe, the only thing I can say is do some looking around. There's great stuff on eBay. You'll never know what you'll find. And also try radio spares. Now, quick few little words about motor controllers, variable frequency drives, once again. If you're going to get one, Make sure you set it up properly. Make sure you set the base frequency or whatever they call it. That is, make sure the voltage is appropriate for the output. Like for my, my chiller, we want to have 120 volts coming out at 60 hertz. We don't want it to have full voltage coming out at 60 hertz. Do some setup, do a little researching on that. And if you want to get one, then another point, make sure you get one with the filters in it, the input filters, because if you don't, everything will be ringing the whole a whole building power supply will be ringing, it'll knock out radios and it'll mess up everything, but get one with filters in it. Now ABB drives are pretty good for having the filters built in, and a lot of them have the filters built in, a lot of other ones do. My particular one doesn't, so I put the filter on external, not a problem. Now, this video is really actually just kind of part one. And this is only a small chiller, it just cools my computer, but in the future I will show you or I hope to show you, if I can get it done, a much larger one, a heat pump actually, that heats a whole house, heats and cools a whole house with a very similar setup, variable frequency drive, temperature controller. So, when I get that done, if I get that done, I'll see you then.